Season 10 has been completed. If you remember last episode, we were in a little bit of a title race, sandwiched in between Real Madrid and Barcelona. That defeat to Barcelona meant we had a little bit of catching up. However, Season 10 has been an incredible season for the club. Let's go and find out what we've been up to in our 10th season on the Costa del Sol. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Trek Inspired Man. I'm going to save that I've been running. We're in our, to our end of our 10th season now. The idea behind it is that we have to play a 4-2-3-1 all the time, try and play possession football with always having a Trequatista on the pitch. And we've had an amazing season and how better it could have actually been. I felt at the end really disappointed with one competition in particular that I thought we were going to do something special and we just kind of bottled it in a big game towards the end of the season. So our league season, we finished second. It's the club's highest ever league position. So that is something to be proud of, even though it's season 10. Still something good to get in between those big boys, Madrid, the two Madrids and Barcelona on our budget. And here it is, the sponsorship income, ours. We are down, even though this is what annoys me a little bit, because I think in real life, the, the thing that we've built with Malaga, I think we deserve, we've got some a couple of world-class players. Our sponsorship deals would be bigger, but our sponsorship deal is only 8 million. We're not even as big as Levante, Sevilla, Real Sociedad, Athletic Club, yeah. Valencia's been really poor. You know, we should really be fourth place. And it's really disappointing that we've not kicked on because that money would have been absolutely key. We've been given a really low budget for season 11, uh, regardless, even though we're in Champions League and stuff, and we've got a transfer that we need to make. So it's it's getting to the point where it's frustrating me. However, it does kind of put into perspective how well we've actually done. Now, the one that really broke our hearts was the Europa League. We got all the way through to the semi-final, beating Villarreal in the last 16. Aggregate, uh, what was that? 5-2 on aggregate. Really, really good home leg, 2-0. Go, uh, Mark Gay and Hernandez scoring a couple of goals. 3-2 in the second leg. They scored one in 90 plus two. We were kind of comfortable, especially when we opened the scoring early on in the second half. We then drew the tournament favourites, Arsenal, and we beat them 4-2. Gustavo Saar coming off the bench to score a couple of goals. They took the lead, William Saliba. Then we re responded, Estevayo, Lu uh, Luis Carlos scoring. They then equalised. And then we managed to score two late goals. And then at the Emirates, we took a 1-0 lead to put us 5-2 up. It then went 5-3 and 5-4. However, Teo did this in stoppage time. It's his 10th season at the club. And he absolutely rocketed it in to give us a magical 2-2 draw, but set us up in the semi-final. The away leg in Nice, we got a respectable 0-0 draw. However, as you can see, we didn't create a lot. This is the thing that I'm going to show you in the second leg. 0.29 XG for them at home. And I thought that is a really respectable draw. Nil nil away from home. We'll take that. And then we went into the home leg and we just didn't create. Well, we did. An XG of 1.36 against theirs, 0.88. And we, it, the game was quite flat. The game felt very flat. And we've just struggled a little bit with... Playing Saturday, Thursday, the squad isn't deep enough to do these constant changes, in particular at the back in the, and the attacking three central midfielders. We've really struggled with that. And it did actually mean that we lost in the semi-final. It was Leipzig who actually won it. Nice. Nice actually won. That should have been us. I really feel that should have been us. Now you're wondering, yes, to be fair, Europa semi-final, that's the furthest Malaga have ever been in a European competition. We've also finished second in the league, best ever league position ever in the club's history, but that's not all. Our Malaga side won uh, the Division 1 Group 4. We win it, like, I think out of the seasons that we've played it, we've only not won it once to qualify for the knockout rounds. 169 goals, only one defeat, absolutely smashing. Like, there used some big teams in there. Almira, Granada, Cordoba, Cadiz, maybe not, but obviously Sevilla and Real Betis in there as well. So, you know... We only can beat what's in front of us. We then beat Tenerife 5-3 on aggregate in the quarterfinals. 
The semi-finals, we smashed Espanyol 5-1. And in the league final, we beat Sporting Gijón 3-1 to give us four consecutive league wins. Out of the 10 seasons, we've been in the final twice with three run-ups and three times we've not appeared. Absolutely tremendous. However, it gets better. We also won the Spanish Under-19s Cup. Now, we've been playing in it, obviously, in multiple years, and I've not really looked at it much. However, we've won it for the first time in our history, beating Rayo Vallecano in the final. So, two, three trophies, if you include the uh, 19s League, the 19s League Cup final, and then the under 19 Spanish Cup. So, three trophies. However... The big one was that we won the UEFA Youth League for the first time, obviously, in the club's history to give us an unforgettable season for our under-19s, winning all four trophies. As you can see, since it's begun, Benfica Sporting, Inter Arsenal, Dynamo Kiev, Napoli Sporting, Napoli Ajax, and then Malaga. What a historic set of clubs have won this trophy, and we have done it. Beating Hoffenheim in the final 4-2, Semi-final beating Mainz 3-2. Paris Saint-Germain in the quarterfinals. Napoli, two times champions in the last 16. Knockout play playoff uh, round. Uh, Eintracht Frankfurt. Third round qualifying Linfield. That was a nice little draw. Second, I think we started in the second round, yeah, beating Hearts. Absolutely tremendous. So us, first team, trophies. None. Best ever league season. Furthest ever in the European competition. We've then had the under-19s. League group done. League cup done. Spanish, F Spanish like under-19s FA Cup done. And the UEFA Youth League done. There's just our B team who were in the second tier. We actually got relegated. Now we're back in it. How well did we do? And the answer is we won. Our B team won. The second division. Now, they can't get promoted because we're in... Obviously, you can't have the two uh, two teams, two clubs in the in the same division. So if we ever got relegated, despite, despite of what Atletico Malagueno would do, they would have to go down as well. But they've won the second tier. 90 points. They won by 13 points, scoring 92 goals. Letting in 60. But that achievement is absolutely, I've never been able to get anywhere close to this. I tried to do it with Bilbao and we always came up and then went back down. It's going to be difficult next year. There's always a transition. However, we've reached a point with our B team players where they've not quite been at the level for the first team, but we've managed to keep hold of them and they have done absolutely tremendous. Quevin Quastro, if you remember, I signed him because, number one, he plays for York City. Number two, he's Ralphie's favourite player. And number three, he actually joined uh, Stinger's team, Salgueros, in the save. And I wanted to get him aboard. We offered him a three-year deal. We need to get a few more B-team players in of that level who are not going to be first-team players, but are on lower wages. That's the key. A lot of my youngsters are on really high wages. So, look, there's a load here, 13,000, 11,000. And when you've got a registration cap, what, 72,000, we've gone over it, look, so some of the players haven't been able to play, it's made it really tough, so some of that will definitely work on in the future, but we've done exceptionally well, like our highest earning player, I don't know why I've offered him a new deal, because he's barely kicked a ball this, year, this season, um, our Australian striker, 22 goals, 21 goals in 38 games, who would have thought that would have been the season that we've managed with Malaga without us, the first team? Now, they do use my tactic. I've set up all the coaching. I've set up that player pathway, which I am going to do a deep dive on uh, at a later point, I think, next week on the channel about how to create the ultimate, you know, everything from training to players to to managers, to scouting, to squad rotation, to everything for your B teams and your under-19s to get it looking as good as this. Right, back to the first team. We're just going to talk transfers. Now, we've not been given a lot, 22.64 million, which is a problem because our leading goal scorer for the season, Raul Hernandez from Manchester United, is on loan. We did manage to negotiate a nice deal. 44 million is the optional fee. We need to sign him. He's young enough. He's Spanish. He's had a good season. We've missed a goal scorer for the last few years, so he definitely needs to come in. That's going to take up all of our budget. Now, we have got the opportunity to sell on, to make up that extra money as well. There's a couple of players in here that we may look at selling on, in particular Mora. 
Uh, Shapisky maybe. Ocon's not played much. Ledesma's always wanted. So there's, there's, there's an opportunity. However, it's going to mean that we're not going to be able to kick on to that next level. We need to sign players in multiple positions. Next year with the Champions League, we really struggle. Like, we've been okay in the Europa for the first half of the season because we played a lot of our B team to get through the group stage. And it's not going to be the case this year. We're not going to be able to play in the Champions League using our B team, like not our B team, but our backup players. We're going to have to only try and make three or four changes. So us being able to strengthen and having two really quality players, like we're struggling at right back, we're struggling in the DMs, we're definitely struggling in the attacking areas. We need another centre forward who can come in and score goals. It's a lot of money and we haven't got any money to do it. There's nothing of real note coming through yet in the under-19s. However, if you look at Matthias Tabare, he is our new 15-year-old, six-foot, for right back, already wanted by Paris Saint-Germain. We're going to get the deal signed up, so there's going to be no... He's already worth £11 million. 15 heading, 16 marking, 16 tackling. We just want to work on his attacking numbers because we're playing with wing-backs, obviously, in them wider areas. But, wow, he's going to have a season in the B team, I think, next year. And I think in, you know, in two seasons' time, he will be ready to move into... And in a year's time, he will then look at, sorry, moving into the first team at the age of about, what, six? He'll be just turning 17 and he'll be then the backup right back. So that is a hope. We've also got Ala Shalatala, in, uh, Israeli midfielder, really nice prospect, could do definitely one of the deeper roles or one of the attacking roles. Will he be an absolute superstar? I'm not entirely sure, but he will once again go with the B team next season. Players leaving the club at the moment. There's only Raul Hernandez is the only 33 expiry. So obviously he's the lonely that we're going to try and sign. There is, as I said, a couple of others that may end up being shifted out for us to fund the deal for Hernandez. So I'm not expecting a lot of deals to be done this season in the summer. We're just going to have to go with what we've got and yeah, maybe get a couple of free transfers, maybe try and get a couple of loans in just to give us a little bit of squad padding. It's not going to be a massive season. You know, the board always puts in 21 million. How much are we leave, losing so far? So we're at 80 million. We've lost, what, 16 million pounds. There might be a little bit to come from Champions League and stuff. So we're looking at about even, but we're just not being able to kick on to the next level. The new stadium is ready. Not ready. It is happening though. And it is going to be built by the start of 2036. Now, highly likely, Jose Traquinho won't be there as manager of Malaga to see that out. That is the development on the save. Um, find out next episode in a couple of days. I'll probably get it out over the weekend. Um, and you'll find out what's going on on the Costa del Sol as we move into season 11 with the Trek-inspired Malaga.